Good evening. It's my privilege to introduce to you tonight Sister Mara Stella of the Sisters of Life. Sister Mara Stella lives in Denver, Colorado, and loves speaking the truth and beauty of God's love to the hearts of college students. After graduating from the United States Naval Academy, Sister Mara Stella had a profound experience of God's love and knew that she was being called to lay down her life that others might live. She was captivated by the Lord's invitation to become a sister of life, to live as a bride of Christ and a mother of souls. She entered the, the novitiate of the Sisters of Life in 2006 and professed her final vows in 2014. She has served in the Sisters' mission to vulnerable pregnant women and accompanied those suffering after abortion. She currently serves in the community's mission of evangelization on college campuses. The Sisters of Life are a religious community of women founded in 1991 by John Cardinal O'Connor, who take a fourth vow to protect and enhance the sacredness of human life. Immersed in Eucharistic prayer within a vibrant community life, their missions include caring for vulnerable pregnant women and their unborn children, inviting those wounded by abortion into the healing mercy of Jesus, and fostering a culture of life through evangelization, retreat works, spiritual accompaniment of college students, and upholding the beauty of marriage and family life. On a personal note, I can tell you that Sister Maristella is a zealous woman, a, a woman of great integrity, that she's a marvelous speaker, and that we're very lucky to have her giving us a conference tonight. Um, so without further ado, I present to you Sister Maristella. The only homily I ever memorized was about the Holy Spirit. One morning, this older, wise, sage-like priest got up to give the homily at Mass in our chapel. He said, when you ask the Holy Spirit to come, he comes. And then he sat back down. It's one of the best homilies I've ever heard and one of the best lessons on the prayer and on the Holy Spirit. God wants to unleash his gift of the Holy Spirit. He wants to give us gifts. When you ask the Holy Spirit to come, he comes. So let's do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come through Mary. Jesus, you said to us that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Jesus, we welcome your saving power into our lives. Come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Mary, Mother of the Church, Spouse of the Holy Spirit, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, Pentecost is the birthday of the Church, and my eight-year-old nephew reminds me all the time that birthdays mean gifts. This year, for his birthday party, they had a drive-by party, and his friends threw gifts out the car windows. Boys love that kind of thing. Gifts communicate friendship and love. In the convent, we have a tradition where we give each other gifts on our feast days. And you would not believe the, what the sisters come up with on zero budget. We have some creative geniuses who've made paper mache circus animals, or songs with a seven song mashup, or cakes with their own firework shows built into them. We love gifts. The more outrageous, the better. God also loves to give gifts. And his budget is infinite. He has all the wealth, creativity, and power in the world. And the first gift that you've been given is the gift of your life. Out of the abundance of his love and a plan of sheer goodness, God chose to create you. You are a very good gift. And like a divine artist with infinite creativity, he imagined every detail about you. The color of your eyes, the shape of your face, the sound of your voice. He fell in love with this idea of you and said, he must be, she must be. He breathed life into your soul and you're destined to live forever. This act of creation was the first of many extraordinary and even mind blowing gifts that God has given you. Love wants to give gifts and make promises. And God does not ration the gift of his Holy Spirit. In addition to your creation, God gives the Holy Spirit to us lavishly, fully, beyond measure. In baptism, there's an effusion of divine life in your soul. 
and the Holy Trinity lives inside of you. At baptism, you were given all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they're, but they're seeds that need cultivation and growth. And these gifts grow through love and cooperation with grace. Through the circumstances of your lives, God sets up something of a greenhouse to seal these gifts with the warmth of his love and allow them to grow and flourish. Today, we're gonna to talk about the gift of fortitude. During, during this pandemic, fortitude is the gift that we need. During these last months, we've had an acute sense of our vulnerabilities, the frailties of our humanities. We've experienced suffering and anxieties. And the world is focused on finding a vaccine. But we know that there are profound spiritual realities that need tending to, and our hearts cry out. The gift of fortitude is our spiritual vaccine. Fortitude takes away the sting of fear because we're clothed with the strength of God and the promise of eternal life. Fortitude orders our emotional realm and frees us from uncertainties and anxieties. Through the gift of fortitude, we can face suffering well with the confidence of, children of, of the children of God and heirs of the kingdom. Not too long ago, we were at a parish and sat a few rows behind a family with four young children. One of the little boys, who was about three years old, couldn't sit still. And after several stern warnings, he was up again. So dad leans over, picks him up, and carries him out of the church, just as the homily had ended and the whole church was silent. He yells out at the top of his lungs, pray for me, Catherine Doherty said, give me the heart of a child and the awesome courage to live it out. The root of the word courage is core, the Latin word for heart. Imagine your heart, this deep interior space within your soul, this pure untouched core where God dwells. In order to live from this sacred space of our hearts, we need fortitude. The root of the word fortitude is fort or fortress, and it implies a stronghold, a defense against the enemy. Fortitude allows me to live from my heart, to hold fast to the truth of my identity and to persevere. One rainy night, a Franciscan priest in Rome read the scripture passage from the book of the prophet Haggai, where it says, take courage, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. He was inspired to share these words with the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, but he had no access to the Pope. So he went into St. Peter's Square and stood beneath the Pope's apartment window and yelled up to him, Coraggio, Holy Father, Coraggio. Something of the gift of the Spirit must have been transmitted to St. John Paul II, because a short time later, this friar, Father Conte La Mesa, received a phone call from the Vatican saying that he was appointed be, to be the preacher to the papal household, a position he's held for the last 40 years. The gift of fortitude has the power to change the course of history. It's the axis on which the truth of our identity can be proclaimed. Fortitude will be uniquely expressed in your life because with each person who God chooses to exist, is completely unique and unrepeatable. Imagine God's love rep represented by a diamond with as many facets as there are people who are, will ever exist. Each facet creates a unique reflection of light to make that diamond sparkle. Imagine that you are one of those facets. Without you and your love, it would be as if that facet were blackened out forever and something of God's love would never be known to the world. God's love is personal and particular, and love is interested in the de details. God's love and his gifts are specific to you. Fortitude will look different in each person. For example, in an illiterate child like Saint Jacinta, who held fast to the belief of the apparitions of Fatima, even when her life was threatened. Or in the 12 apostles, who were martyrs as they brought the gospel to the ends of the earth or in St. Monica, who prayed for years for her wayward son, Augustine. What will the gift of fortitude look like in your life as you live it out? We have a friend who's, who admits he struggles every morning to get out of bed. He says he hits the snooze button three times 
in honor of the Holy Trinity. We can see that fortitude is needed here to live that heroic moment. In Jesus, all the gifts of the, of the Spirit and the virtues are fully alive. And the Holy Spirit wants to trace the image of Jesus into your soul. In the Paschal mystery, fortitude takes center stage. It's fortitude that impelled Jesus in his passion. Fortitude strengthened Jesus in the garden. With fortitude, he hung upon the cross, with his gaze fixed on the Father, with his gaze fixed on you, and his love for you, and his love for me. Northern European artists often depict Jesus on the cross as a warrior in battle, as a conquering hero. We see in this image the greatness of the heart of Christ. And he wants to share the gift of the Spirit with you. And he promises us, everything that I have is yours. A wise bishop recently said, God has plans for your life, and so does the devil. There's a battle going on for your soul, for your eternal destiny. And the enemy wants us to believe that he doesn't exist. And so he lulls us into a comfortable and numb way of living. But the choices that we make each day lead us in one way or another to our eternal destiny. Fortitude is our spiritual vaccine that strengthens us to live in the truth. The four-year-old nephew of one of our sisters was getting some of his shots one day and the nurse said to him, do you know what I'm doing? I'm injecting superpowers into your muscles. He wasn't impressed. He looked at her and said, but I have Jesus in my heart. He's right, because Jesus told us, apart from me, you can do nothing. The battle for our, our, our salvation won't be won by human strength. We can't just gut it out. We need a deep reliance on the Holy Spirit, on the divine gift of fortitude. And God wants to infuse your soul with his strength. So like St. Paul, you can have the confidence to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You won't make this great claim because you are so strong, but because you are deeply relying on the Holy Spirit who clothes you with his strength. And his power is made perfect in weakness. For most of us, the battle for our salvation will be a daily one. It'll be a daily battle for love, for truth, for interior freedom. To be kind when I don't want to be. To be patient with myself and with others who irritate me. To choose life when it requires sacrifice. To be committed to the truth of my identity as a beloved one of God, even when I sin and fail. Fortitude gives us the strength to overcome the trials of discouragement, of loneliness, of laziness. It holds me to the belief that my life has meaning and is a, meant to be a radiant expression of God's love in the world. These are the very ordinary battlefields of daily life. When Amanda came to us, she had already suffered an abortion as a teenager, and she found herself pregnant again. She wanted to live, to live differently, but just didn't know if she could. She was in an unhealthy relationship, and she didn't have the support from her family. But she begged God for strength. Early on in her pregnancy, the doctor gave her a severe adverse prenatal diagnosis and told her of all the difficulties and struggles she would have raising this child. She was well aware that she didn't have a good job or an education. And the doctor told her what a burden this child would be and encouraged her to have an abortion. Then one day he asked her, so this is going to be a struggle for you. What are you going to do? It was a David and Goliath moment. She paused and with a surge of supernatural strength, stood up, looked him in the eye and said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be a good mother. And that's exactly what she is, to a beautiful, healthy girl. Fortitude called forth from Amanda her motherhood and allowed her to choose despite immense obstacles. We all experience trials, and many of us might feel like we struggle with the same sins over and over again. Addictions to drugs or alcohol or pornography, or the temptations to believe we haven't been forgiven even after confession. These temptations steal our joy and rob us of the freedom that Jesus has won for us. One woman said, 
The hardest thing was for, for me was believing that I was worthy of recovering from my addictions. Jesus storms this battlefield. He races to us with his mercy and reminds us of our dignity as his children. Some of you may be called to be martyrs. Some of you may be called to shed blood for truth. But most of us will be called to a white martyrdom, a daily death to ourselves. Fortitude is the gift that's being given to martyrs and it's still being poured out in our world today. In 2015, ISIS captured and kidnapped 20 Egyptian migrant workers. They were told that all they had to do is say a few words of the Muslim affirmation of faith um, and they would be released. They refused. It would not deny Jesus Christ. After 45 days of torture without breaking the faith, they were let out to be beheaded. ISIS videotaped the entire event showing 20 men serenely walking out, out onto the beach to be executed. They knelt down with their executioners behind them with machetes in their hand. Their last words were over and over again, Ya Rabbi Yesu, oh my Lord Jesus, over and over again, oh my Lord Jesus. There was a man from West Africa who was kidnapped with those men. The terrorist didn't think that he was a Christian and he was told that he could leave. But when he saw the courage of those 20 men, he said to the terrorists, their God is my God. And he knelt down next to those men and became the 21st martyr that day. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. He takes simple, hardworking men who long to return home to their wives and to their children. And he reveals the deepest desires of our hearts to be embraced by our Heavenly Father. The same voice that spoke to the ancient martyrs still calls out today. In the second century, before his martyrdom, St. Ignatius of Antioch said, there is a living water deep inside of me that cries out, come to the Father. The faith of these Egyptian men was not an abstract concept. It was a fire in their souls. These men had a deep inner core of faith that no amount of torture or cruelty could touch. Their hearts were guarded by a fortress where a flame of love and faith burned for the whole world to see. The effect of fortitude is peace of soul. One mother who lost two of her sons was radiant as a queen when she was interviewed. She said, I thank God, I am a mother of martyrs. I'm proud of them because they did not deny their faith in Jesus Christ. Heaven is their destiny. She prays for those who killed her son that God will give them light and open their eyes to see truth and goodness one day. We too have a mother, the queen of martyrs, interceding for each one of us so that we can live this gift of fortitude. A story from the Desert Fathers. A young monk went to Abba Joseph and said to him, Father, I pray, I fast, I say my prayers, I try to live in peace. What more can I do? Abba Joseph stood up and lifted his hands towards heaven. Out of his fingers came flames of fire. And he said to him, if you will, you can become all fire. If you will, you can become all fire. The Holy Spirit is ready to unleash his fire in your soul. If you ask the Holy Spirit to come, he will come. He will transform your life and your soul. If you desire it, you can become all fire. So I invite you to ask yourself, do you have a desire for God? Do you have a desire for holiness? Do you have a desire to allow God to unleash his gifts in your soul? Wherever you are in this, whatever your answer is, we can go to God and experience the miracle of empty hands. We go with our emptiness and our poverty and he gives us everything. So I wanna pray a little litany with you. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to come into all the deepest crevices of our hearts. After each phrase that I'll say, I invite you to say with me, come Holy Spirit, unleash the gift of fortitude in me. 
So, come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In all the ways that I've grown lukewarm and lazy, come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In the moments where I need endurance to take another step in my daily white martyrdom, come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In all the situations where I act cowardly and weak, come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In the moments when I will face danger and I'm afraid, come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In the face of suffering and obstacles, come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In the places where I become discouraged, lose hope, and forget my identity as your beloved. Come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. In the most secret center of my soul that needs your protection. Come Holy Spirit, unleash your gift of fortitude in me. We praise you and we thank you, Father. Come Lord Jesus, come Holy Spirit. May you enjoy the love of God and may he flood your soul with the fire of the Holy Spirit and unleash all his gifts in you. God bless you. In our attempts to persevere in our practice of the faith and to endeavor great things for the Lord God, the thing that we perhaps find most discouraging or most difficult to overcome is our own weakness. And so the church in her wisdom equips us with prayers and with sacraments and with all kinds of graces so that we would be fortified for the journey. And so uh, in the church's tradition, uh, a special love has been attached to a few psalms which meditate on our own sinfulness as a way of encouraging us in our pursuit of the Lord. We call these the seven penitential psalms. And for our prayer at the end of this conference, we'll recite Psalm 143. Lord, hear my prayer. In your faithfulness, listen to my pleading. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant. Before you, no one can be just. The enemy has pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead. My spirit is faint within me. My heart despairs. I remember the days of old. I ponder all your deeds. The works of your hands I recall. I stretch out my hand toward you, my soul to you like a parched land. Hasten to answer me, Lord, for my spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me, lest I become like those descending into the pit. In the morning let me hear of your mercy, for in you I trust. Show me the path I should walk, for I entrust my life to you. Rescue me, Lord, from my foes, for I seek refuge in you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your kind spirit guide me on ground that is level. For your namesake, Lord, give me life. In your righteousness, lead my soul out of distress. In your mercy, put an end to my foes, all those who are oppressing my soul. For I am your servant. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.